Hi, I'm Kurt Loder. This is MTV News Raw. All talk, no, or very, no, that won't do. That's, right, let's try this. Hi, I'm Kurt Loder. This is MTV News Raw. All talk, little or no editing. And our subject slash victims today are the pride of Northern California, Green Day, whom we accosted in their rehearsal space, a garage, what else, in Berkeley, California recently, on the eve of the release of their new album, Insomniac. Here's what we heard. No, that was okay, so should we blow the whistle on this girl? Well, maybe not. We'll blow the girl. Okay. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Yes. No. Superhero. You no, know, cool. but if you could just ask him to not, not. Superhero. Don't say Shut up. Don't speak. Bad Shut up. words. Shut up, shut up. Say peas and carrots. Don't say. Don't get a ring ever. <laughs> yeah, be cool with a ring. It, it lights up. Yeah, yeah actually, it's, it's a soundless lighter upper kind of thing. You know, so we can see it. It's more beautiful. Who do you look around at today, like bands your age that are really, really great? Anybody you see that's terrific and maybe nobody knows about yet? Nobody knows about it. Weezer, I don't even know. Uh, I like Weezer. I mean, everybody knows who they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah everybody knows. <laughs> They're over. <laughs> um, anybody? Or maybe any, like older groups that are still good. I can't think of any myself, but I'm sure, I'm sure they must be out there. I kind of, I, I kind of like Tom Petty. I appreciate him because he's just, he's a no bull kind of. Yeah. Artist, you know, he doesn't. He's not a sex symbol. He's not a sex symbol. He's not like it, you know. Yeah, not watching Aerosmith and the MTV Music Awards was like watching an old man ready to have a heart attack, you know, with that guy doing the backflips and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I turned to those guys. I was like, you know, my sister took me to see you in the back of a coliseum once. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> That's all I can really say, you know. It's just like you guys are like superheroes. You guys are like real people, you know. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm sure they're real people, but they're real superheroes. <laughs> Jesus. Man, whatever the B12. It's like, what do you say? Yeah, it's, well, you know? but it's, yeah, they're they, they're right. still with us for sure and Doing making right. tons and tons of money. Yeah. Who's that? Aerosmith. Oh. Those guys. <laughs> Do you find this whole thing disorienting? I mean, did, did you suddenly, well, not suddenly, but you come out and you've made it to the level you're at? Do you worry about sort of being sucked into the industry? And... Mm. Well, you are in the industry, I guess we should. Yeah, we yeah. To, yeah. to an extent. There's no conveyor belts. There's no, <laughs> no time card. There's no, you know, parking lots. That's being in the industry means we're here right now, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, I hope hey. there, there might even be worse things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it's just part of it, though, you know. Like I mean, do you find it affecting the way you write st stuff, or the way you perform, or the way you dress, or anything like that? No, I don't think so. I mean, we're not we're not going to come out and like with you know being like punk rock and stuff like that. You know, it's we, you know we've always have been sort of you know just silly. Yeah. You know, I mean, silly would be right. I mean, we weren't nerds. I wasn't a nerd in high school. I was more like I didn't get beat up. I was just invisible. You know, yeah. and. uh Invisible. Well, you didn't go to hot. You, you, you <laughs> oh, just yeah, I forgot. You hung out in front of me. I it. slept in the back of Mike's truck all the time. <laughs> well, you guys, well, you weren't like delinquents or anything, right? You were just kind of. Well, well, good through stages. stages. So you were going through. You were going to clown school, right? Can we? No, can we talk no, about that. For a <laughs> I didn't go to no You know. Come on, come on. And, and you. It was a summer camp. Yeah. And I was, and I was a young lad. Yeah. And as young lads and young. Girls go to hang out with Wavy Gravy. <laughs> wavy <laughs> Gravy. So showering with with Wavy and so there, there's like a hippie background to your life. You took a shower with Wavy Gravy. You did. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Maybe his last one. <laughs> so you know that's your. That's How do you hide money from a hippie? <laughs> Put it under the soap. <laughs> uh, no, it's like. Um, yeah, you know, I went to school like everyone else. You know. I believe that. Well, not Actually, like everyone. Just because I lived in a cheap time. He was playing, playing in the lookouts. <laughs> don't mean it. He was playing in the lookouts ever since he was 13. Yeah. So, you know, he's... Or actually, he's been playing with Lawrence like Livermore. He's an avid punk yeah. rocker. He's been around to see it all since he was like nine. So. Yeah. Solar power core. You know, it's it's all kind of interrelated. I mean, we play a lot of shows in Berkeley. It's just True. filled yeah. with it. <laughs> yeah, how do you survive here? I mean, I always think of Berkeley as cool. being like the headquarters of like ponytail guys and... Is it, is, it, is it not like that? Always carry a Swiss Army knife with you. So, yeah. Well, first we were grunge, you see, and we had the ponytails and the flannels. Then we said, hey, there's something that's going to be happening soon. It's going to get a lot faster. We weren't quite sure if it was hippie or songs down, just like, do, do you have the time? No, it was like really slow and tuned down to like D. <laughs> but what is time? <laughs> when you think about it. So this new record seems a little, seems a little angrier than before. Would that be fair to say? Kind of... It's more aggressive. It's yeah. a play at highest possible volume type record. Does this re reflect something personal going on? Uh, That's just the way it came out, really. You know, we just wanted to write. It's just, I mean, I don't know. I didn't really have a plan for it, a second or anything. Hold on a second, okay? Can you 
Sure. Sure. All right. He'll be, uh, he'll be right back. I do. Well, let's get back to clown school, okay? Uh, no. Can you jump in for us? Or? I mean, Should I'm fascinated by this. Like this. Like an axe right into it. And, and, up, like and then I ripped the, the pole out and... and shit sucks. <laughs> no. What? The thing I, I mean, that... Like, it's weird. Do you know what we're going to tour yet? Is that, are you sitting on it? <laughs> no. <laughs> and, uh, one problem is that we don't have a drum set for the next tour. Yeah. No. I have the same Somebody guitar. will give you one. You know? yeah. Do your mom bought you that guitar? Is that like an old guitar? Yep, my mom bought it for me when, I was, when I was about 11 years old. I went when I was 11 and I still have it. Can't just use wow. other guitars. All he knows. <laughs> You know what guitar is gonna rock? And what guitar is not? So that how, guitar is hard. How was last year for you with Dookie and everything? Did it change your lives? Did it? Yeah. Definitely. In positive ways. Um. Yeah. Well, you know, it increased financial stability. Um, Always good. Yeah. Um, increased. Un were you living? Were you living on a, in more modest circumstances before that? Oh yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, when you're eating top ramen every day, you know, there's not a whole and lot jolt. you can say. I'm living it up. You know? Well, we all, we're always been, a, been able to uh, live off our music and stuff. Yeah. We just most of the time we lived in the van, yeah. you know, and just we toured six months out of the year all the time. And and uh, but I mean, '94, whoa, kind of a blur. Yeah. That's over. What was '94? What right. happened then? <laughs> was you know. A success thing. Do, do, your, do your fans like write to you, or do you do you have your own internet account? I write. Oh, like internet. Yeah. Every right. person who writes this, I write. I sit down and hand write a full length letter and answer every single question. Every, I've got stacked. I've got a whole room be, yeah. stacked. Hand, handwriting letters out, drawing in pictures, everything. <laughs> Actually, we used we used to do that until it got to be a ridiculous number. Yeah. I was writing. We like, like decorate the envelope. Four or five no type no type letters a day. You know. But what do they want to know out there? I mean, are they, are they how old are they? Are there, is there any a, it ranges from, for me, like 6 to 60, <laughs> you know, sometimes. I'm trying not to read that stuff, tell you the truth. Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> we, <laughs> <take> you <laughs> brain damage. we keep people posted and stuff, but you get three, three letters, and, and some like people just, like, they sit there, okay, like, yeah, every cool, class okay. is a different yeah, part yeah. of their letter, you know? Okay. And so we got, like, 31 pages. <laughs> Dear Green Day. First off, I woke up this morning and felt like I had to kill myself. But then I had a bowl of cornflakes. Then I walked outside and got in the car. My mom drove me to school. It's she disturbing. smokes too much. This is just going everything, you know? Mm. It's ridiculous. Green Day, Young America's own therapist. Stay tuned for more when we return. Something like that, kind of. Welcome back to MTV News Raw with Green Day, more than just a band, a comedy happening. We join the lads now talking about their breakthrough appearance at Woodstock 94. Yeah, a lot of people look at Woodstock as like a, some turning point. Was well, I mean, it did like, a, you know, extra gig. Yeah, we got, uh, you know, a lot of people saw that show and stuff. But to tell you the truth, we played kind of bad. That we did. We weren't that good that day. We were, and the thing is, is we're like 30 feet from from the, the yeah, audience. Right. It was way back, and then. Funny those kids can huck that mud though, you know. <laughs> and uh, well, those kind of those kind of shows are like half about the music and half about I guess being there, right? Yeah, and half and about stuff. having the biggest barbecue that you can. Yeah. <laughs> half about taking hundreds of dollars from suckers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> those guys like paid like you know so much for the tickets and then like everyone else just came in for free yeah, like I mean, all the locals just like yeah. walked right in with their beer right like you everyone were, else well, is like even drinking out, Pepsi you know? like all. Uh, I'm, I'm glad uh, that they, you know, that they did it as opposed to not getting to go in for free. No, I, cool. I think yeah. it was great. I think it, the whole thing should have been, you free. know, free. <laughs> but what did, what did it's, you it's took, a lot of, took a lot of aggressive persuasion to get us into that. that. These kids are like, oh yeah, we paid, blah blah, and then everyone else is in for free. We're pissed off. <laughs> did you watch? Did you watch any of the other bands there? Was, was anybody no, really no, good? No, we were in now. Uh, <clears throat> it was like our day off on the Lollapalooza tour. Oh great! We just we just <laughs> came in. Went into play and left, and it turned out to be quite a time. It, we, we were longer getting in there than it was, and we were on stage and actually there. Jesus. Yeah, yeah like I said, we were, I don't think we were actually playing that well, and then the mud started fleeing, and, you know, it's like, you can't beat them, join them, you yeah. know, so I just put my guitar down. And, <laughs> is this baby re related to, you, to your baby, or is it, no. just, is it a previous baby? It's previous baby. It was already there? Mm -hmm. you know, has, 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 have babies, like, changed your lives? And, uh, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, do yeah. that to you. Not mine. Why are albums too? You know, every time I see their kids, my, I get this big smile on my face because <laughs> usually I smile first and then they smile. 
<laughs> or they start crying. You know? Mike, if Mike has like grandpa daddy. It's like he gets to hang out with the kids, but he doesn't have to. Yeah. Hardest thing I've ever had to do, and that's for sure. Do you ever like play around them, or do you bring them in to listen to you rehearse while that? No, they don't come. They're too small for that. But and I play acoustic guitar. That's what just pluck their eardrums out. You know. What do you play when you play acoustic? Are you playing? Did I say that? Like a James Taylor thing? I'm sorry, okay. No, no. You don't play acoustic. Yeah, no, I, play, we, I play acoustic. I wrote all my songs on an acoustic guitar. Yeah. Oh. Mm. Good. Okay. I th any any r good song should be able to be played on an acoustic True. at least, you know? True. Good point. Yeah. Good point. Any good rock and roll song. Okay. Well, now we're going to do inter each of you individually. Yes. And then it'll, the torture will be over. Mm -hmm. oh, own, here we go. So, okay. What the, tell me what kind of family you grew up in. Or was it kind of like a working class family? Um, yeah, my mom is a waitress. My dad was a, uh, he was a jazz drummer and a trucker. Yeah. Worked for the Safeway Trucks. And uh, he paid, he, we had six kids in our family, I'm the youngest. And he passed away when I was 10. And, uh, and so it was kind of, we had kind of, we struggled. I mean, we weren't like, we we're broke, but you know, we weren't yeah. starving or anything like that. You know, it was a pretty, you know, lower middle class, you know, working class. Yeah. That was around here, right? Yeah, I, I, I'm from a small refinery town called Rodeo. Yeah. So lots of smokestacks. My brother actually uh, works at the at the refineries now. So I mean, that's where everybody's destined to do. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I've always been into music. I mean, I've been into music since I was really young, like five and stuff. Like my. Um, Who are you listening to then? I wonder. <laughs> I'm well. I you know my my mom listened to a lot of country music. You know, she mm. comes from Oklahoma. Yeah. It's the name Billy Joe. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it's not William Joseph, it's just Billy Joe. <laughs> really? Yeah. And uh um so I you know, I heard a lot of you know, I heard lots of Elvis from my, my sister and my I have an older brother who's uh twenty one years older than I am. Wow. So my mom is now she's I she's sixty three, so I'm I'm twenty three. Mm -hmm. And um so she's been through like every generation of kids pretty much since like the 50s, yeah. the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, and up until like the beginning of the 90s. Yeah. Is she pretty understanding about the things that you wanted to do. Yeah, I mean, she was a real strict parent, you know, for all of my all of my other siblings. But um, I think by the time she got down to me, she was just like, <laughs> "Hell with you," you know. I remember I came in one time and I had this really bad haircut that my friend gave me. <laughs> that was like, it was like shaved all back here, and then like it was shaved in the back right here and then it was like long in the back nice <laughs> i came in i go hey mom and she's laying in bed she goes oh billy joe no <laughs> and she was pissed too and then I, but you know what could she do about it <laughs> too late then yeah did the, the, this this guitar that you got where did you see it was it just in a music store window or um no i this guy george cole um i don't know if you're familiar with a band called beatnik beach yep um and before that, it used to belong to a guy in, in a Big Bang Beat mm. or something like that. It's like some, I don't know what the hell it is. But uh, he had a guitar, and he was uh, kind of teaching me how to play guitar a little yeah. bit. You know, basically, it wasn't like a guitar lesson because I never, I didn't learn how to read music. I just kind of went in like, did you learn anything out of the book? No. <laughs> well, it's jam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, he taught me how to put my hands on the thing. Yeah. And uh, Who were you playing at that time? I mean, were you, were you aspiring to play, like, punk stuff, or was it... Um, you going for the country thing? No, no country. <laughs> That's definitely not. Uh, um, I was into a lot. I was into a lot of bad heavy metal and yeah. stuff. Well, some good heavy metal. Yeah. Know. Yeah. I mean, I really liked like the first Van Halen record. Yeah. And, um, Ozzy. I was a big Ozzy fan. Yeah. I loved like Randy Rhodes and stuff like that. And I never really was a Black Sabbath fan. Yeah. But. Um, do you ever picture yourself as like one of these like fleet fingered lead players just playing? I really, always really I can imagine myself, I can imagine pretty damn good, but <laughs> being there, no way. You know, I just didn't have the patience for it. Yeah. You know, that was my thing. It's like I never you know, I just didn't you know, and I never wanted to sing for yeah. a band ever. Really? You no, know, I just I just wanted to play guitar and stuff and kinda of sit in the back, but I don't know. I think Mike kind of at one point just told me I didn't have a choice. <laughs> He's gonna kick my ass. Were you writing stuff at this period too? Um well, the first song I wrote, it's a song called Why Do You Want Him, uh, when I was 14. That was when I started, yeah. I started, I was getting in, so my sister was like a big, like, replacements fan, mm -hmm. and uh, Husker Du, and stuff. I remember, like, the first, like, sort of alternative rock, you right. know, 
show I've ever seen was uh, REM. My sister took me when I was 13. They played in this um, high school gymnasium in Santa Cruz. Wow. <laughs> So and I, I was like, oh, oh yeah, I'm old, dude. they're not metal, dude, you know. <laughs> and so, I, and I went, and it was like, and the three o'clock opened up for him. Oh, whoa! And it was, it was like a religious experience yeah. for me. It was like, you know, they say every seven years, there's certain moments that change your life. Yeah. You know, I think that was definitely one of them. You know, I just, just it wasn't so much the music or the band, but it was just like the whole atmosphere. Mm. And I just remember watching like Peter Buck was like, he was playing. Uh, he was playing this record, and like their monitors or the PA system was really bad or something. So he was like strumming on his guitar really hard. And everybody already walked off stage, <laughs> and he was just going, uh, 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 just hammering on it. And then finally, he just takes this Rickenbacker and just oh. swings it in the air and just smashes on the ground. And I was like, Yeah! I that was like the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life because it was anger. It was straight up aggression, you know. And you know, it, I mean, REM isn't quite the aggressive kind of band, but you know, at that time they were. <laughs> yeah, it was, I, I, was, I was impressed. I was 13. You know. Ode to Billy Joe. We'll be back with... The, with <laughs> Ode to Billy Joe. We'll be back with the rest of Green Day, Mike and Ray Cool, in just a moment. Welcome back to MTV News Raw with Green Day. Now, spotlight on the band's rhythm section, Mike Durnt and Trey Cool. So what were, the, what were the beginnings of the band like? What did you start out playing? Did you realize you wanted to write original stuff at first? Or? Um, we start, you know, me and Billy wrote our first song together in like 1986. Yeah, no, 80, 87. What it was, was it? my freshman year. Um, was it Strangeland? Or no, it wasn't Strangeland. It was uh, Best Thing in Town. Yeah. Song called Best Thing in Town. Is it like a love song? Or? No, it's uh, Come Along, Let's Go for a Ride. Come Along and To the Other Side. Uh, just Best Thing in Town, you know. Not a girl's best thing in town. There's nothing to do where you're at, hmm. you know, type of thing. And, uh, you know, they're all on tape. They're all on CDs and stuff. Yeah. Or, you know, um, a lot of songs we wrote back then aren't on, on CDs and stuff. But yeah. those are just, you know, chord changes now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's, it's funny. They're not even songs anymore. Did you did you look at it, this as something you could go ahead and pursue for like, I years? Didn't, I didn't think we had any any future in this. It was really fun for a long time. We just play anywhere and everywhere was our mm. our motto. Our, our old drummer had a, a VW bus and he could drive, you know. And so it was anywhere and everywhere was the motto. Yeah. And we just went. We played. We've played everywhere you can possibly imagine, from from uh, existentialist churches to banks to bathrooms <laughs> to rooftops to the middle of the street to, to pe you know, people's <laughs> kitchens to, I mean, lots of places. Yeah. And wow. you, do what, you do whatever you can. And you just, I, th that, you know, a lot of, I have friends will come up and say, oh, you know, what, what was, you know, what was your, your secret? How'd you get discovered and this and that? And I just haven't talked to them in a long time. And, you know, most people, you know, who are actually out there plugging away, no, you, it's not a discover thing. Yeah. I think we just kind of realized after our second record, oh, okay, we, we have something here, you know. Yeah. We keep going. We were ready to break up before Kerplunk came out. Really? Yeah. Because yeah. wow. our old drummer left, and it took me and Trey and Billy Joe a while to learn how to play together. Yeah. Rolling? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, well, you listen to Gershwin. Are there, like, seriously? Do you sit, so, do you play other instruments besides drums? I have a little guitar. A little one's about this big. Mm -hmm. what, what, else, what else do you listen to in the way of music? Um, all kinds of, like, a lot of Beatles, I like the Beatles, you oh. know, and the, normal stuff. And the other lads? Kind of, you know, like a lot of old, like Billy listens to like a lot of old like vinyl and stuff, like yeah. Fang and just like old like punk stuff. And, you know, it's not, we didn't like grow up on that stuff though. It's kind of like we kind of yeah. learned about it afterwards. And you, you know? do you feel strange when people say, gee, it's this new punk thing. And I'm like, yeah, on. you guys are like, you're like the Pistols and blood. You, know? <laughs> you guys are like, you know, the Clash. It's like, oh man. <laughs> You're not an influence on us. Like, were you influenced in a big way by this, you know, 76? It's like, nah. <laughs> right on. Who would you say your influences were? If there were any? <laughs> we're influenced the opposite of what influences usually are. You know, like, we're influenced on, like, what we hated. <laughs> like, Hall and Oates, like, you know, all this, you know, Cindy Lauper, all this, like, 80s crap. Yeah. That just just like, didn't want to be that. All, like, the mainstream... 80s crap, yeah. like the whole Martha Quinn era, <laughs> whatever. 
So you said if we could just avoid being that, we'll have accomplished something? Yeah, it's like, you know, like what's lame about that? Oh, that, you know, hammer-on 10-minute guitar solo. Okay, what's lame about that? Oh, all this, you know, girls in bikinis, like, <laughs> running around. What's lame about that? Oh, like, you know, it sucks. So, yeah, I just, you know, do you think just know we, what sucks. Do you think we live in a better age good. now? Do you think people are more attuned? Well, I don't know, that hole in the ozone's the size of Europe now, and I don't think it was back then, but... Well, we're still walking around, though. Yeah. This is the last couple of years that we'll be able to walk around without the sunscreen, you know, <laughs> enjoy it. That's a very upbeat way of looking at it. Okay, Kelly? Well, obviously you're concerned about the ozone and stuff in the future, because maybe because you have a daughter. Does that, has that... See, that's that a good segue. What, having a daughter? Yeah. Well, it's like, you know, it makes me, I mean, I don't think I would be as, like, you know, concerned about, you know, the future if I didn't have some offspring. Mm. Forget I said that word offspring. <laughs> just, we'll just leave that out. If I didn't have a child, you know, I wouldn't care so much about what was going to happen. I started to, like, make friends with some, like, you know, other parents and stuff, too, you know? <laughs> yeah, right. like, so. Are they surprised to find that you're a down-to-earth guy and not some wild rock and roll guy? No. Yeah. I'm not down-to-earth. Well, no, I'm I didn't mean that as a pretty slur. wild guy. <laughs> Let me tell you. I let my hair down sometimes. <laughs> Do you think you'll be fixing this room up a little bit, or...? It's, what's wrong with it? Uh, the heat. The heat? It's, it wouldn't be so hot if you didn't have all these dome lights. Oh, well, blame it on us. <laughs> okay, I think that's yeah. good for me. Do you have any more questions, Kelly? No, no. <laughs> I think you can go. Thank you. What was that?